Hello, hello, dear friends. Can you believe we are in the probably one of the most stressful weeks that many of us have ever lived through? And it's Monday and it's going to go through the week on top of all the other stress that we are under. Now is it, right? Tomorrow is the big election day and all the things that can happen along with this. It's stressful, girls. It is so stressful. And so because of that, that and in my group, my TTAP tips and support group, there was someone who posted something talking about how she was tested and she her cortisol levels are super high. And then other people came in and said, yeah, my cortisol levels are really high and I've had insomnia. And like, what do you do? Like, how do you get this cortisol level down? And so I thought this would be just the perfect evening to just talk a little bit about stress the stress response and give us just a couple of tools that we can use to just help move this energy out of our bodies so that we don't allow it to make us sick and reduce our immune systems when right now that's exactly the opposite of what we need to be doing. And so last week I posted a link to a Brene Brown podcast where she interviewed a set of twins who have written a book, an incredible book. And the book is called Burnout. I got to write it down because I'm make sure I get it right. The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle. It was fascinating to me. And now I'm a movement specialist. I'm a stress reduction specialist. And there was some information in there that I was blown away. Not so much that it was new, but the way that they languaged it, along with what I've already kind of intuitively found, I thought was just super brilliant. So I am highly recommending if you are feeling stressed out, burned out, you're tight in your body, you're not sleeping and your cortisol levels are high, please get this book and read it, or at least go to the Brene Brown podcast. You can just Google Brene Brown podcast, and it's one of the last ones there. So fascinating. And here's what I want to say it was so interesting to me. What they were talking about is that when you are burned out and stressed out, you have to figure out exactly what happened all the way back to get you to this point. And they're talking about our stress response and how when we are in a stressful situation or something that causes us stress, we have the stressor, the thing that caused us stress, how we are reacting to the stress, and that our stress cycle has three parts. There's a beginning when we first start to feel stressed, the middle when all those stress chemicals are going, and the end when we release the stress up and out of our bodies. Now, okay, that's like, doesn't sound like it's so like revolutionary, right? But here's what I'm going to share with you. Here's why for me it was revolutionary. I'm going to give an example because I think we can all pretty much relate this. Let's pretend like we're all in a meeting, okay? And here we are. And most of us have been raised to be good little girls, right? And you guys know when we were raised, little girls are not supposed to emote and cry and be big and bold and scream and carry on and show our emotion, right? That's just not what good little girls do, at least certainly not in my family. No, we just sat and we smiled and we were good, right? And we just went along with whatever it was. And I think so many of us are raised like that. How many of us are caregivers, right? We're busy taking care of everybody else. There's no time to take care of us. So we're always out there being good little girls, taking care of everybody else. Okay, so with that scenario, here we are, we're in, say, a corporate meeting or even just with your family, corporate meeting, and the man is there and he's doing his thing and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is just awful, this shouldn't be, and you really want to speak up or you might say something and boom, you get slammed down, and what's happening inside your body? You are just pissed, you're angry, you're feeling the stress. And when that happens, you are creating this huge cascade of chemicals, hormonal chemicals, adrenaline is pumping, ding, ding, 
cortisol is pumping. Okay, we've got all these neurotransmitters pumping. We're like this, right? Well, now all of a sudden, the meeting is over. We've played our nice girl part. The meeting is over. Whatever's happened has happened. The stressor is no longer there. The man's not there dealing with you. The lion's not at your back trying to bite you, right? The stressor is gone. But you're now left with these chemicals spreading through your body, right? So off you go to the next part of your day. You're like in the middle with the stressor and the chemicals. But we never get through the tunnel to the other end, the end part of the stress, where we're able to get rid of all those stress chemicals and complete the emotion or the stress cycle. Therein lies the issue. Now, you've done that, you're like this, those stress chemicals maybe have calmed down a little bit, but now they've just somatized or gone into your body, right? Now maybe your stomach's tight, digestion's not good, you're just kind of, uh, you go home, and now you've got to deal with all those stressors. And you can't just freak out. You can't just go under the bed and just hide. No. Now we have to take care of the children and the husband and the dinner. And, da, 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 and you know, everybody's wanting something from you. And here we go. Back up with the stress chemicals. But now it's time to go to sleep or whatever. And you never have a chance to complete any of these emotional cycles. And over time, over time, over time, it just builds and builds and builds, okay? That stress, that's the stress that A, increases all that cortisol, which then has an insulin. It, it, insulin and cortisol have this, this cascade that they do together. When your insulin's high, what happens? Zing! All of a sudden, we start gaining weight. Where? In the belly. And we're going, well, I haven't really eaten that much more. Or maybe one of your ways to deal with stress is to eat, to, to, so you don't feel this, okay? We're gonna tap it down, and what's the best thing to tap it down? We know if we eat sugar and carbs, temporarily we'll tap it down. But you haven't actually gotten those stress chemicals up and out of the body. And that's the part I found so fascinating. So. In this book, they not only tell you, well, this is why we're just a big old stress ball. <laughs> they also give lots of examples of ways, tools that we can use to get rid of that stress. And of course, what's the first way? Of course, it's movement. We've got to be able to move. Those stress chemicals are there and they want to move. They need to move the energy out, right? So many of us, we walk that she actually... Um, Brene Brown, in this interview, they said to her, so Brene, like, what's your favorite way to move? Because number one way is movement. She said, walking. Like, I can just put on my headset and I just walk, 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 walk. Yes, perfect. But you've got to be able to do it like daily because that stress builds up and you have to end the emotional stress cycle. So walking is great. If you're somebody that really needs even more running, beating something up. I personally, you know, I don't even necessarily for stress want to do a T-tap or something because I'm so focused on and doing that a certain way. Instead, I want to do it where I just move and get all that energy out. So for me, I love to put on my music. Put on my music and just move, feel the emotion. You know, music is one of the most creative things that you could just sink into and feel and then move with it. Man, I can get on that great music and just move. And in 15 minutes, I'm like, ah, okay, I'm good. So any kind of movement that really gets you moving like that is so great. Okay. What's another way? Deep breathing. So they were saying, you know, that great deep breathing where you do maybe in through the nose, expanding that belly breath, count to five, hold for five, and then through the mouth, slow exhale to at least the count of 10. Now, why is that? Well, breathing, when you inhale, that stimulates the sympathetic fight or flight nervous system. When you exhale, it stimulates the parasympathetic. So we've got our yin and yang of respiration there. So if you're looking to calm down, 
we want to have more parasympathetic nervous system activation. So if you inhale deeply, you want to go, that's why I said five counts, hold the breath, and then super slow exhale, draw that exhale out. Ideally, it should be at least twice as long as the inhale, so that when you're leaving, you get the parasympathetic that rest and digest. Do quite a few rounds of it until you just feel like, okay, I got that. And breathing, my goodness, you can go in the bathroom and do it, right? When nobody's looking, you don't have to make it be like a whole big hour-long thing, although that's really good when you have the chance. Anything really creative that also allows you to feel and, and get those emotions out. So if you're not somebody who really resonates with music, although that is innate in our bodies, but perhaps your medium is more art and maybe just taking a big sketch pad and, and a piece of chalk, right? And just chalk it, feel it, work through those emotions, get them in and out, put them on paper. OK, put them up on a canvas, whatever it takes to get that energy out of your body, that stress and the stress cycle of everything that's happening. Here was another one that I absolutely loved, and I actually practiced this with my hubs. If you happen to have somebody that you love at home, this is a beautiful one and it works. And that is a two minute hug. Yes, a two-minute hug where we just can't, what, not one that you're sinking in, but one where you just, each of you are just holding each other and you're just leaning in. Each of you have your own support, but you're leaning in, hopefully right at the heart space, breathing, hugging, just feeling that other person's energy supporting you and you're supporting them. The body was so meant for community, for support, for that heart center, and those hugs can make so much difference. Just in two minutes, you can feel your whole emotional system, all that stress just wash on over you. So there you have it. Three beautiful ways, three or four actually, that you can help to end that stress cycle. So you all know I teach my general somatic stretch class, and that is definitely something that's beautiful to do. Of course, I do that all the time. We do it at least three or four times a week all together in community. And I love that because it's also very slow movement. You're going in the body, checking in. We're breathing that deep breathing, and we're repatterning that if we're like this with our stress, that we're out. It's actually called neuromuscular re-education. And I love that. But you know what? I still think that just really being a little bit more active and getting it out on a daily basis is really critical to just help with the daily stresses that we're doing. Not just the tightening in the body, which we have, but just to get rid of all that excess emotion that as good little girls, we were not taught to do. We've never been taught how can we feel our emotions, honor the emotions, and allow them to come up and out and be expressed in a healthy way. Not at somebody, but in a healthy way where we're able to just release and breathe and go on with our day. So I hope on this Monday of this most stressful week, you'll consider some of these Get on, put some music on, dance, smile, hug, breathe. Take good care, and I'll see you again soon. Blessings.